Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today, and I am joined by... Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Mr. Ninja Star. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm on One Piece Nation's video for today. Uh, where we have a really interesting discussion that I think a lot of you are going to really enjoy talking about and whatnot. And it's uh, definitely out to uh, One Piece Nation's One Piece subscribers and stuff. And what's the topic for this video? Uh, today we're going to be talking about why we, will, why we love One Piece. Like, what's so great about it, and kind of what makes it more appealing to people than, say, Naruto or Bleach. Not to say they're bad, love, I love both those theories, but One Piece has a certain appeal that they don't have. So, yeah, why don't you um, start off, Mr. Nina Star? Yeah, I love One Piece for a lot of reasons, as a matter of fact, like... What you said, like, out of probably, like, the big three, I would say Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece, if you count that, if you want to include Dragon Ball instead of Bleach, you know, it's whatever. But One Piece, when I when I was first getting into it, or no, when I was first hearing about it and stuff, I'm like, yeah, but the series really doesn't seem like much. Like, the art style doesn't seem like my type of thing. Pirates are cool and all, but I prefer ninjas. I prefer, like, a guy who could freaking, uh, like, fly around and save the Earth as an alien stuff. I find that a lot cooler. And then, um, when you actually do find out about this, like, when you find out a lot about the lore of the series, when you start getting attached to a certain point, like, I know a lot of people got interested at the series at, like, Baratia, and a lot of people got interested at Arlong Park. Some people didn't get interested all the way up until, like, Alabasta, or Any's Lobby, or anything like that. It all depends for people, but either way, once you get a certain attachment to it, you start really feeling for each and every single character. And, yeah, I'll let you, uh, go off from there. What are your thoughts? So, uh, one of the things that I love about One Piece, and I was telling you about this before we started recording, is that the, the main reason I think that I fell in love with it in the first place is that the main characters are never stereotypical stoning characters. Like, you don't hear Luffy going around saying he's going to bring peace to the world and eliminate all evil, like Naruto does. Or how he's going to save, like, an entire dimension like Ichigo. Luffy really is like, I want to do my own thing and I don't care what you do as long as you don't mess with me. Luffy would probably be fine sitting in a town while somebody went around killing, just beating up random people as long as they didn't mess with him and his friends. And I think that's a major bonus. Yeah. Luffy is uh, is selfish one way or another. Like, I mean, sure, he cares for his friends. Sure, Luffy is a very, like, devoted person overall to his crewmates. But when it comes down to it, like, you know, compared to the other big three goals, like, like Naruto is to become Hokage and protect everyone in, you know, like, in Leaf Village and whatever, you know, ble uh, Ichigo is just, you know, save the Soul Society, whatever. Well, it's uh, Luffy's... Or whatever Ichigo goal is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. doesn't really have the goal, but that's not what this video is about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like Luffy's, if you look at that, I want to be Pirate King. Now, that sounds kind of selfish if you think about it, because what's the point of it? He's not really going to gain anything out of this. Sure, he might start a new pirate era and whatever, but that's not really Luffy's goal. He just wants to find a treasure. Have fun, you know, stereotypical pirate thing, right? Well, it's kind of hard to describe, but Luffy isn't even that stereotypical of a pirate if you think about it. Like, even though we may not like, like, Blackbeard or whatever, Blackbeard's kind of a regular pirate, you know, if freaking, when pirates were still around, like, you know, 1500s, 1400s, all that stuff, you know, Blackbeard could, could have passed off as someone who's kind of like someone from that generation and whatnot, and Luffy, he's a different type of pirate, he's, he's more adventurous than the others, and isn't as, like, he fits well with that shonen protagonist, but he's also kind of his own unique character of the sorts, so, yeah, yeah like, like, most of the time, I would say Jordan Karen I think most other Jordan protagonists would probably not like Luffy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they would. they probably think he's a little bit of an asshole. But moving on, I also, a large part of it, like, is due to the fact that the story, way Oda writes his stories, is that you, each arc, you can enjoy it for it, it in and of itself. It's not like, like, I, I, I could, I've told people, if you want to get a feel for One Piece and you don't care about spoilers, you would be pretty okay with a basic summary hopping in at any lobby. I would never tell somebody, 
Oh, go walk. Oh, you want to you walk? You want to get a feel of what Naruto is like at his best? Go watch the pain arc without start seeing anything. <laughs> like you would have no idea, but you could get a decent graph. Okay, the show is about pirates. They get that. They get fish to control the weather. Uh, this guy has swords. Uh, this guy's made of rubber. This, the talk, talking animal thing. A talking like, skeleton too. Freaking, it's yeah, crazy. Like, you could, like any lobby is a self-contained story. Right? Mm -hmm. With its own narrative, beginning and end, like, you could stop reading One Piece effectively at the end of that arc, and be relatively satisfied. Basically. And... So, yeah. Yeah. You were saying? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I was just saying, like, yeah, with the Ennies Lobby arc, you know, that's a great arc to get into, but, you know, it also comes down to this, like, if you show, like, let's say, Skypea or any other, like, One Piece arc, like, I remember on Toonami, uh, when they were airing the One Piece dub and whatever, they didn't even start from, like, East Blue. I think they started from Long Ring Long Land, and they did it, you know, probably to just get straight into, like, Water 7 and he's Lobby and whatever, and it shows that, you know, it can still be interesting for, like, a new viewer of the source, like, with all the amount of world building, with the amount of emotion going on with, like, each scene, with the amount of humorous moments and stuff, you know, one Piece gets you that emotional feel, but also that excited feel. Like it can make you feel several different emotions. I'm sure a lot of One Piece viewers have at least cried at one point in this story, whether it be well, spoilers for. You didn't cry when Ace died. Oh, I cried. Well, as a merry funeral, you have no soul. Freaking. I'm or, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> or at the very least, like really emotional, because those scenes, like, let me break it down for you guys. Ace, like, when you look at Ace, he was really only in Marine Ford Impel Down. He was in a little bit of Alabasta, but it was longer in the anime and the manga. He just showed up. He's like, "Hey, Luffy is my favorite card." I, he beat up some people, then left, you know. And then, and 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 he's end of Eni's lobby arc where he goes up against Blackbeard, loses. Boom. Next thing we see him, we see him in prison, about to get executed, and then Marine Ford takes place. So we didn't really see much of this character. So. So why would his death seem so emotional of the sorts? Well, I think this comes down to because of how attached we are to Luffy and how Luffy respects Ace and, you know, we, we've already grown attached to Luffy, I would say, by, like, Alabasta. We already have an idea what this character is like and to see him talk about a family member like this so much and a lot of people, Ace, I think, is one of the most beloved One Piece characters there is and when we saw a little bit of him, we didn't even see Ace's backstory before he, you know, died or whatever. Well, we did, but not really like the childhood stuff, but... We saw, yeah. like, a bit... And we saw the backstory with, uh, Roger and Rouge. At least, as much as Oda will ever show us of Roger. Yeah, um... Yeah, it all goes to show, like, we can still feel for these characters, like, from what they're speaking about and stuff. Like, the Straw Hats, they cried, or, like, I think Nami cried when Ace died or something like that. And she only yeah. knew Ace in, like, Alabasta, you know, for, like, a, a few yeah, moments. She, and then but she cried not really for Ace. She cried, though, because he would, though, the idea, the bit, that's another thing. The bond between the Straw Hats and the Incredible be a very idea that Luffy was alone and in pain was enough to bring Nami to tears. Right, and, uh, like, the thing is with me, the reason I got so emotional over Ace's death, like, you know, it, the, the moment where Akainu, who, who, by the way, most hated character, I just want to show him, I hope he dies the most brutal death at the end of the series, but back to the top of the hand, um, when he, you know, when he pretty much fisted Ace right there, you know, I, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, damn, is he really gonna do this? But I think the part that really got me was, like, Luffy's reaction to it, him getting yeah. so upset over it, like, he went all this way! This man broke into the probably the most guarded facility in all of the world government and stuff, and then he has to escape from it, go right in the middle of a war just to rescue his brother, he died. and... He literally died twice. <laughs> so basically, it was all for nothing, <laughs> you know? And yeah. not only that, his own brother's down. Like, we didn't know, like, at this point, Sabo was gonna be Sabo was alive. Luffy had already lost Sabo as what he thought as a child, and now he's losing Ace. So the fact that he's completely alone... And when he was in that war, like, sure, Luffy cares for the Straw Hats, but his task at hand was trying to save his brother. And when that all comes to, it comes goes away, you don't think about what you have. You think about what's gone. And the emotional impact that we all saw was tough to see. And Luffy, we saw at the post-war arc, this really impacted him. He's like, should I even become Pirate King if I can't even def uh, save my own brother or whatever? He was getting really doubtful. Or like, can I? Yeah, basically, and... You know, we, we could really feel for the character, no matter how little we knew Ace, and 
we, we still understood Luffy's pain, kind of like how the Straw Hats did. Uh, that was just me rambling along long enough, but, uh, what do you no, have to say I, next? I, I think the biggest reason all this is that Oda is a genius with how we connect story points. Like, I don't think Ace and Death was what supposed to, was supposed to be that. It was mm -hmm. what it would be a it would be a variant of his death for Luffy. That is the reason we didn't get the eighth novel and Luffy flashback until afterward. Because that just mm -hmm. made it even more like oh my uh sympathized more with Luffy. I would have been able to like place those flashbacks in the perfect places mm -hmm. to make us feel the right amount for Luffy at the right time. Basically. Yeah. And, and last thing I think that just obviously needs to be discussed is but it is probably the most compelling compelling story in all of Shonen. Because Oda is just he's so good at writing. <laughs> yeah. Especially with a lot of the foreshadowing that goes on in One Piece and whatnot. Yeah. And if you look at, like, a lot of... If you, like, let's say you're caught up to One Piece right now. If you look back and, let's say, rewatch the series, you're going to notice some uh, clues that were freaking foreshadowed. Like, shadowed, Jinbei like... Yeah, Jinbei. In, Jinbei. In, in East Blue. Right yeah. before the Arlong Park card. He made his appearance, like, 500 chapters later. That is some Madara from Naruto level four <laughs> Like Yeah. She, that means all this time. Like I can just imagine Oda sitting at his desk, drawing Arlong Park, and being like, "I don't want to mention Jim Bay. Jim Bay, so awesome." Freaking, any he it all planned out and stuff. But let's not forget uh, that one point, like Luffy's dad, who we wouldn't expect. You remember in Logtown, right? When Luffy was kind of getting beat up by Smoker, about to fr about to get like choked to death and whatever, yeah. and then we see like this mysterious hooded figure say "Not today" and just freaking knock Smoker out, and we never saw this dude again. We're like, "Whoa, what just happened?" And I, for people who ca caught the opening pretty quick, like there is actually a shot of this man, and this man is Dragon, and we don't know until like episode 300, like 15, something like that. So basically the post Andy's lobby arc where you find out about Dragon, and Dragon is Luffy's father. And that's crazy to think, because it was foreshadowed all the way back into the first opening for like one shot. And you know, there's also the whole Garp thing. Garp was foreshadowed in East Blue, but we didn't see him until like Andy's lobby. And there's also another one right here, like Sanji in freaking Alabasta. Because of his past, and you know, his like royal, royal family and whatever, he goes by the nickname Mr. Prince and look at look at freaking whole kick right now, you know, with the royal family and stuff. He knew about all this. And it shows that Oda really ties the series together really bet really good and he doesn't just write as he goes like some other uh, manga could do <clears throat> Toriyama. But uh yeah, it's just uh, to say on topic. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I also feel like Oda's ability to to expand on foreshadowing without you even noticing. Like, you may not even notice. I didn't know it until like six months ago. But if you go back and you read, you watch it, the, then you have a flashback with BD, which you have the reverie as a kid. Yeah. Uh, the person they're talking about is Dragon. Like, yeah. you don't even notice it the first time you're watching. And you have to go back and you see them hold up the picture, and you're like, wait, hold on. That's Dragon. <laughs> like, oh. Dragon's face was shown all in. Back, but right in Alabasta, and then we, <laughs> but we I don't actually see him make an appearance until a couple hundred chapters later. It's ridiculous. Right. Like, oh, most manga cause what they do is they have certain things planned. Mm -hmm. It was just clear. Like Kishimoto had Obito, I mean, at least the character term of Obito was the, uh, planned from like chapter fourteen. Mm -hmm. But that, but Oda had everything. Like, yeah. it's one thing when you have, like, Naruto and Obito, it's like, yeah, but that's the main character, that's the character crucial to, like, the main character's teacher. It, it, that's, like, basic common sense, and you would have a backstory from the main character's teacher pre-planned. But, like, even characters that are in no way connected to Luffy in the main story, in, like, the main main story, like, no main character, mm -hmm. have full-blown backstory completely planned out. Like, Basically. that's also the thing is, I never look, you never go into a kid one big chapter, maybe you had the four, but worried <laughs> that something's going to be bad. Yep. 
And Oda had this way of instilling confidence in the audience that he's going to do you right. But do you have anything else to say? Um, I just want to come in here real quick. I think with Oda, like, you know, we've been talking about a lot about, you know, the overall core concepts of the series, you know, Oda, how he's a god writer and whatever, Gota, so I like to call him. Oda, I think what he does really well is he has a lot of good material, you know, there are plenty of manga gun. This isn't just applied to, like, the anime and manga industry. This also applies to a lot of, like, other movies in general, like books, all that literature, stuff. Literature, storytelling. In general, yeah, and they tend to pretty much kind of lose material, but they still want to keep the series going. So that's why, like, the, the material doesn't seem like as like deep as the earlier stuff. Kamuya. And Kamuya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it doesn't seem like much. And then you know they kind of take a decline. It kind of ends off the viewers slash readers on a bad note. But with Oda, the reason One Piece is so long, like I've spoken to many people who don't like this series. At, at all be just because of the length and pacing like I get that one piece is long you can't deny it like whether you're no, a huge one piece fan or not you don't want to start it because of that I get it it's mm -hmm. a massive commitment catching up to one piece basically like freaking I had to spend like three days consistently just watching like episodes of one piece on end so I could try to get to a decent point because I was falling back on it and yeah, it's one of those shows, you, it's really easy to binge and stuff, and what makes it so great is that there's still plenty of material to go for. Like what you said, like, I, I haven't even seen all of Whole Cake or anything like that, but what I do know is Whole Cake is still, from what from what it looks of it, people are still really excited about it, and, like, there's plenty of good material. Like, the funny thing is, like, 870 plus chapters in, they still haven't found the One Piece, they don't know what the Will of D is, they don't years, know. As of the recording of this video, actually. Oh, yeah, and... Yeah, like, freaking, like, Marine Ford was at, like, what episode, like, 400s, 480, something like that, we, and, yeah. like, let's say, so, the, on the anime, it's, like, 300 more episodes, we still don't know how Blackbeard was able to eat two fruits, we still don't even know, like, the, like, we why, we haven't even seen Blackbeard, <laughs> freaking, we don't know what he's been up to, we don't even know, we don't even know Shanks all that much, aside from what he did at Marine Ford and East Blue and all that stuff. All we know about Shanks is that he's really freaking cool. Yeah, for, dude, Shanks is dope, and we see more screen time of Shanks in the openings than we probably do in the whole show. That's all I'm saying. But, um, yeah, it, it, there's plenty of material to go for One Piece, and I think it's still going to last for a while, which I'm really excited for Wano County. Uh, that's going to come, I think that's the next major arc right after Reverie. Yeah, Wano comes, uh... Wano, if everything goes correctly, should be coming. Yeah. Yeah, and basically, it's kind of funny because they reference it in Thriller Bark. Because I, I don't, I have the manga right here for Thriller Bark just sitting on my desk. Like the whole, whole arc in general. I remember when I was reading it, I'm like, Gecko Moria references. Oh, I went toe to toe with Kaido back in Wano, Wano and stuff in the New World. I'm like, all right, cool. And then when I hear about, you know, uh, Wano's going to be the next major arc, Kaido's going to be it. I'm like, oh, they referenced it that early. All right. Yeah, I was like, well, the straw hats are all going to die. But that's beside the point. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, but, that's tough for another day, that's all I had to say. Yeah, but I feel like, well, that point I want to make, the I have to remember that when you mentioned how long it's been going, and I feel like it's sitting as of when we're recording this, Oda is also, he's, he's probably the, no, I can say I'm confident, he is the most connected mangaka I have ever seen with his fan base. Yes, look and at, uh, really question else, corner. Like, just the letter he put on the 20th anniversary, pretty much just at personally talking to the audience, like just pretty much just saying thank you for reading, the way he responds to the FBS questions. Oh my like, gosh. Somebody, somebody asked him, can Luffy stretch his penis? And <laughs> instead of ignoring it like most authors of storytelling would when they get a question about their main character's penis, he straight up is like, let's talk about Luffy's penis, guys. Yeah, it's like freaking Oda is like really interactive with his like readers and stuff. That's why like a lot of people like him so much. I read the SPSs and sometimes the fans will request something like, "Hey, when's Ace's birthday?" Yeah, I think it should be in January. And Oda's like, "You know what? I think I should make it in January because you know January Ace first thing Ace is the first thing in a card deck. January is the first month of the year." He's like, "You know, sure, why not? Thanks." And it's just like that. And Oda does or, little explanations. Or even like my that. personal favorite. Okay, what would the straw hat be like? Like if they were of the opposite gender. And Oda <laughs> draws quote, right, quote. Oh, but that they would be saying, 
he draw he actually draws them all as the opposite gender. He he he's drawn all the supernovas and children randomly upon request. And he knows what he's doing. He knows we're going to take those pictures of them as children and analyze them. He knows. Huh. And he's okay with that. Freaking Oh my gosh, like, it's also kind of crazy, like, he has so much, this, like, little side info that isn't really planned out, because, you know, he's focused on the main story, but, like, if someone's curious about it, you know, some other manga club might be like, okay, that's a stupid question, what, why are you doing, get out of my, uh, send this letter back, I, I don't care about this. Oda, like, someone asked him this kind of random question, I remember, it's like, hey, if the Straw Hats were a family, which one would be which? And he's like, okay, yeah, here, here's how it goes. I'm like, wait, is he really doing this? He's like, yeah, if Robin would, if the Straw Hats were a family, Robin would be, like, that mother figure, Frankie would be that father, you know, freaking and everyone else, or the children, whatever, and it was, it was interesting to read that, see, like, Oda really does care about his readers, very passionate about the series, just like us, so, yeah, that's all yeah. I had to say. No, yeah, he's only ever said one thing that ever annoyed me, but that he's not putting romance in it, because his audience doesn't want it, and I'm like, oh, well, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Oda, that's not true. I, I like you and you knew your fan base you would know like I for I don't care but I know a lot of them do yeah but I, mean, I I understand the point but Harry's making money yeah freaking but, uh... Uh, <laughs> I also like just he's so respectful toward other towards an other manga cuz this is like he had balls this guy came out and took shots you did you, you may not know it, but he took shot this Jonin jump when Naruto ended, the Naruto wasn't on the cover. He was like, what was it, 15 years of making you a tons and tons of money? Second best mag second best in the magazine for 15 years and they were in Naruto the Magi not on the cover? Huh. That's hmm. not very fair. Like, he said that publicly and Bro. to his boss. Huh. The guy who like, could freaking, like, it doesn't matter if Oda's like the uh, one piece of the biggest, you know, manga in Japan. Oda, the guy who was like, you know, freaking like, the guy who built like a lot of his like income and stuff off Shonen Jump, you know, he, he doesn't care, you know, he's being honest and that's why. Well, I think he, I think he super. also, he knows he's the, he is the reason they still like exist right uh, now. Okay. He knows he's like half their income, he knows it. Yeah, when when One Piece is number one, and the thing is like the things below it, like Naruto and Dragon Ball. Sure, they're pretty big. I think like twenty million, you know, twenty two yeah, million. But One Piece, like, yeah. like Dragon Ball, is what half of One Piece's sales, I believe, the manga. Uh, yeah, I think it's something more like three fifths, but I don't know. It's something around that range, but still, One Piece but it's is like, still kind of like it's almost laughable how big the difference is. Yeah, it just. One Piece yeah. has been dominating, you know, it, I think the peak of the manga was like during Marine Ford in 2010. Yeah. But either way, it's still going strong. People are still loving the series of the day. People, like me, I've just gotten into it like, I think like six, five, six months ago, something like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm already so attached to the series. And you know, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah. yeah. And like, honestly, and I'm, we're not here, the in there. it's not perfect. Nothing perfect. Jesus, I don't mean to mess with your expectation, but look at Fifth Man Island. <laughs> Dude, no. Oda has flaws as a writer. Pacing, no, no, he, has, like, he has one or two arcs that I don't think are the greatest, but he makes up for it. Because, like, he doesn't look he, he has like a two questionable arc, and he comes in with like Greg Rosa, with like Gear Force and Mastaba reveal. <laughs> and we're just like, okay, you're forgiven now. <laughs> like he, he doesn't like like there are arcs in one base that I have legitimately had no problem with at all before yeah. like I have like no problem with anything that happens in it but uh yeah we should probably end this video getting kind of long uh, okay this is gonna be some dress rehearsal level at one point uh with the amount of video which is like 24 yeah, minutes so. need, honestly I could go on for hours I really yeah. could same, but I, I don't know about the, if the viewers are really like in tune to listen to us talk about One Piece for like an hour, but you know, yeah. if you guys want to see it, you know, I'm down, but it, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you might want to see us just ramble about One Piece for like over an hour. We will do that. Yeah, freaking like for a guy that's only watched like, I think like a couple, like 
almost like half a year or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm still so attached to the series. I'm willing to talk about it. Like like what OPM would say, I'm not. I'm just going at Fishman Island, but like I still have a lot of fun talking about it and stuff. Yeah, so. I also think, but this one was a point. That's one of the things so great about it is because the mystery, there's so many mysteries. Like for you and me, we can talk about Blackbeard and Delafruit thing. We can talk about that equally. Hmm. We're both just a clueless on how Blackbeard did that. Like, we have, we've we been given no additional information on that. We could ramble about that if we wanted to. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out Mr. Ninja Star's channel with the link to that will, of course, be in the description box down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day. And you have anything to say? Uh, no, I'm just saying thanks for watching OPN's video. And yeah, keep enjoying One Piece, yeah. guys. Peace. Yeah, and uh, don't so yeah, forget, subscribe for more videos, like the video if you enjoy, and peace out. Alright.